everything inside me. The spell and spelling was meant to create a magical trance over you, to obstruct the true meaning of the essence of the creator. Many occult secrets are hidden within spelling and grammar, but it doesn't take much digging to reveal them. For instance, as per Thoth, the Egyptian god of learning, wisdom, and magic, also depicted in ancient hieroglyphs as a man-bird. The purpose of spelling is to cast magic energy with a definite purpose. Myths surrounding Thoth even say he created himself through language, but this is eerily egoistic, and suggests deep occult powers beyond just being able to win a spelling bee. There is an interesting parallel in the Christian Bible, and the Gospel of St. John as well. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If the occultists want to control a population, they simply delete, distort, and generalize the truth. This is the meta model used behind most of MK Ultra and other mind control techniques utilized by the deep state. Language and grammar are one of the primary means to distort truth. When powerful people utilize certain speech patterns, they appear to know the truth about something, but they don't truly understand what other people think, feel, and believe. This is irrelevant, because the aim is to convince them through a spell what is true to the occult paradigm. To see an example of this in action, we could look at thousands of hours of political speeches, but we'll keep it simple and direct for now. Let's say a leader wants to convince the general population that a law to mandate common core teaching standards is a good thing. They will use language like this. All sensible parents agree that children should be able to meet certain academic standards where developmentally appropriate. Let's break this one sentence down to find all its spells. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Firstly, there is a foregone conclusion within the phrase, all sensible parents. This is called a lost performative. It assumes that something is true without any concrete proof. Who determines what is sensible? What academic standards are we talking about? Who will determine them? The next problem is with the absolutism of the statement. Should you disagree, that all parents agree, you are automatically in a position of opposition to power. You're bucking a truth that everyone else has already accepted. Then, certain academic standards is also rife with ambiguity. It's a vague term meant to cast a large net, so that as many people as possible will be caught in it. This phrase also uses nominalization. How would you know when you've achieved developmentally appropriate standards? Is this some arbitrary set of rules meant to teach our children nothing at all, or something of great importance? Time has shown that Common Core did exactly what its makers promised. Confuse the hell out of kids and teachers alike with double speak and backwards math but the spell to get it implemented worked. Finally, we have, we're developmentally appropriate. This is more lost performative phrasing. It implies a judgment about child development, without taking any responsibility for what that is. Consider that this is a single sentence, with spelling and grammar in a C of the CIA-sponsored occult reference decades-long interdisciplinary study into mind control. You need to explore way back before Operation Paperclip, and into the deepest known annals of human history, to find the magic of language, and its use by occultists, this is what informs all mind control programs today. Can we get control of an individual to the point, where he will do our bidding against his will, and even against fundamental laws of nature, such as self-preservation? That's from a real 1952 CIA memo. Now recall what Thoth, the Egyptian bird god, said the purpose of language and spelling was to cast a magic spell with a specific purpose. Let's look at another example. The words write and writing also contains write, as in ceremony or ritual. 
The words also contain the right, as in the right angels used prominently by the occult, and found in sacred geometry. The word, or spiral, whorl, makes the world. This whorl, or spiraling energy, is the premise upon which divine geometry, including fractal geometry and the Fibonacci series is based. This is also called God's fingerprint, as it appears in the golden ratio, 1.618. The golden ratio appears to be the main source code that is within all intelligent divine creation, and is also the number assigned to man. However, the occultists use this whorl, or world, and divine plan a bit differently. For example, the golden ratio has been linked to the number of the beast, 666, because of the false assumption, intended spell, that divine geometry can be expressed in integers, which it cannot. If you hit the SIN key on a calculator, after entering 666, you'll get this answer, an integer, minus 0.8090169943749488. It seems random enough until you know what to look for. We've been taught that the ancient Greeks, being master aestheticians, like their geometric figures to be pleasantly proportioned in alignment with the golden mean. In the case of rectangles, they preferred the side lengths to be in proportion as the golden ratio. If you do some fancy calculations and divide by 2, you'll get the 666. Here's the problem, though. Using a spell, we've been taught, or it's been hidden from us, that the divine ratio, at least among the occult, honors Satan. It does not. As Ruth Tatlow describes in her paper, the use and abuse of Fibonacci numbers, and the golden section in musicology today, a complex set of misconceptions about the use of the golden section and Fibonacci numbers in music has evolved in recent years. The perpetuation of these misconceptions is guaranteed by a steady increase in the number of printed and electronic articles, books and dissertations, many of which bear the marks of academic integrity. She continues to explain that in about 300 BC, Euclid described a ratio which he termed the extreme and mean, DEMR, or the divine section or divine ratio. The terms divine proportion and golden section to describe Euclid's DEMR were coined in the 16th and 19th centuries respectively. The DEMR was formed by lines and compasses. Euclid never mentions the size of the angle. He has a numerical expression for DEMR. General rational numbers do not appear in his elements. She states. For Euclid, numbers and magnitudes were different kinds of quantity, arithmetic dealt with the discrete, and geometry with the continuous. Therefore, the right angles or the rights of the occult, are based on the bastardization of the divine ratio, or the golden mean, as it occurs in nature. It cannot be drawn by compasses and lines. There are thousands of words and phrases offered by occultists in power to sway your mind and to bend the truth of the universe. Interestingly, Thoth was even credited with the invention of music, but we know now that even the earth have a song of their own, so how could an Egyptian bird god invent something that was already inherent in the divine? Odd then, that the CIA has also used music to break detainees. When music is used in a very different way it can even cure cancer. As we uncover the methods of the elite to control us, we cannot look past our most basic methods of communication, speech, writing, grammar, and of course, thought. To know is to be free. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.